In this video, I'll give you some tips for organizing your effects and presets. Now, effects are video or audio features that you can add to your sequence. There are effects that you can add to clips, such as I have added to this top clip here. I've added a Gaussian blur, and you can see that if we change the blurriness on that, it gets applied in various levels. Or indeed, I have an invert effect added to this. It's deactivated at the moment, but if I toggle that, you can see that the clip is inverted. So we'll leave that off for the moment. Also have a video that explains all about effects and the effect controls panel, and that is linked above just now. There are also effects that you can apply to audio clips. And in this case, I'm going to add the high pass filter to this audio clip. You can see that it has appeared here in the effect controls panel and we can change the parameters related to that. And that brings us to presets. Presets control all the various attributes of your effects, such, for example, as the blurriness. When you add Gaussian blur to a clip, it comes in with blurriness set to zero, but you may want it set to 50 as standard as you're applying it over and over again to several clips, in which case you would create a preset for Gaussian blur. If you right click on it, you can save it as a preset with that 50 already included in it. Let's reset that back to standard for the moment. There are a number of default effects that are always available on your clips. So for video clips, that would be motion, opacity, time remapping. Those are standard and they're always there. And you can apply presets to those as well. So if, for example, you wanted the scale to be set down to 50, as an example, I just type in 50 here, then you could set that, save that as a preset and every clip that you would drag it onto would automatically be set to a scale of 50. Let's reset that back to standard. So that has explained what effects and presets are. Effects are the features that you add, such as invert or Gaussian blur. And presets are the options or the parameters that are included in those to customize the way that you want them to operate and you can save those as presets in order not to have to configure the effects every time. There are a very large number of effects that are available in Premiere, and you can add more to it. So in order not to have to look up every individual preset that you want to use every time, and you can look them up by using the search bar at the top. So if, for example, we wanted to look up Warp Stabilizer, you can type warp in there and you've got warp stabilizer. That is a quick way that you would add it. I've created a bin here called favorites. Let me just delete it so that we can start that again. So if you want to not have to look up your effects every time, let's say there's a set of eight of them or 10 of them that you use over and over again in your projects, you would create a new bin by clicking on new custom bin at the bottom of the effects panel. So click on that and it has created a new custom bin. If you click a second time on the name of the custom bin, you can rename it as you wish. I've renamed it as favorites. Apologies to all my American friends. I've used the UK English spelling of that. There's nothing in it at the moment, as you can see, but let's assume that Warp Stabilizer is an effect that you use on a regular basis. So we type Warp into the search bar and we take Warp Stabilizer and drag it onto Favorites. Now, it doesn't take it out of the location where it already was, but it's now in your Favorites bin. Let's see some of the other Favorites that I would typically use on a regular basis. I use the crop quite a lot, so let's um, look at that. Just take that and drag it into favorites. I use cross dissolve a lot. So let's pick up cross dissolve. And you get the idea that if we just close down that search bar and open up favorites, you can see I've now added those three favorites into it. And typically I would add a lot of others. I would add denoise, dip to black, exponential fade, 
um, and so on. But let me just take up an interesting one that I've begun to use quite a bit recently is Linear Wipe. Just add wipe into the search bar and you'll see that Linear Wipe comes up here in terms of transitions. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to add it into fa Favorites. And you'll see that Linear Wipe is now in there. If I close down that search box, you'll see that it's been added to the list of favorites that we have. Now, I've got two clips here that are layered one above the other. And you see that as soon as we move, the top clip overrides what is um, or shows on top of what is in below it and, and conceals that. But I'm going to add the Linear Wipe to this clip. So we just drop it onto it. And you can see now that we have the top clip selected. You can see that we have linear wipe here. I'm going to add some of my usual parameters to this. I'm going to, um, first of all, change the wipe angle to 135. You'll see why in a moment. And I'm going to change the feather to 1000. And that works for a 4K sequence. I'm going to go to the start and then move 25 frames to the right. That will be one second because this is a 25p timeline. So I've moved by holding shift and using the right arrow and each one moves me five frames. So that's 25 in total. And I'm going to animate the transition here and I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm, we're going to move the transition up to 100%. So now as we move through this, you'll see that there's a really nice sweep effect that takes place. You see that it's at an angle. That's where the 135 comes in. And you see that the feather is nicely blurring it as it moves across. So I quite often use this as a transition between one thing and another. If I just play that normally, you see it taking place at quite a nice speed. You can change the speed as you wish by changing the where this occurs. You can make it occur much faster if we move these closer together. If I move it that way and then do it, it happens really fast. So you're in control of how that works. Let's just move it back to where it was. Now, the key thing here is that I don't want to have to type those parameters in every time that I want to use this particular effect in this way. So what I will do is I will right click on linear wipe and I will say save preset and I'll call it linear wipe preset. That's absolutely fine. You can give it a description if you want. In this case, I always want it to happen at the beginning of the clip. So I'm going to anchor it to the end point and I'm going to say OK on that. And if we open up presets up here, you will see that a linear wipe preset has been created. So let's just delete linear wipe off the clip for the time being. Delete that off and you see that everything is back to normal. If I wanted to add that effect with all of its features and parameters already in place, all I need to do is drag the linear wipe preset onto the clip and now it works exactly as I want it to. So that saves a lot of time and effort. All the presets that you create will be created up here, but you can create a new bin for those. Right click on presets and open up new preset bin. You can call it whatever you want to call it and you'll have it there and you can put your presets into it. They'll always be there. They'll always be separate from all the standard presets that you get with Premiere. You could rename this. Uh, so let's just rename this as um, another bin. And the interesting thing now is if you want, because that begins with A, it should occur up at the top, but Premiere does not sort them automatically. So I would suggest if you want that to go to the top and you want to sort all the items that are within it, rename them all, export that set of presets. I'm going to export them to the desktop, just to make a clear place to pick them up from. I'm then going to delete this so that bin has been deleted. I'm going to go back and import presets. And we can uh, pick them up from the desktop because that's where we saved it. 
open that and you see that it has now gone into the right location being sorted properly and it's right up at the top. So it's really handy to have your own custom presets bin at the top of the list where you know how to find it every time. So here what we'll have is our custom presets are at the top of the list of effects and our favorites are down at the bottom. And you can put whatever effects you want into these bins and you always know where to find them. You don't have to go searching through. Let's just run the transition again. So I hope you find benefit from that. And if you did, please give the video a like. And if you would like to see more tricks and tips of Premiere After Effects and photography in general, video production, then subscribe to the Video Darkroom. Many thanks. I'll see you in the next one.